Yo, what's up guys and welcome to the Triple Play Podcast. In today's episode we are gonna go through the Extra Fire M42, then Game Gear XM1R, and then maybe a little bit about the Mallow Wireless as well. And then we're gonna talk about, is it necessary to be a good gamer to review review mice? So yeah, how, how have you been guys this last past week? I've been pretty good. Um, obviously had a bit more time with the, the M42 now, uh, when I've been having breaks from work and streaming. Really enjoying it so far. Uh, looking forward to the potential fix on the DPI difference at the lower level. I don't know if that's already been addressed, but can't wait for that. Uh, on top of that, I also finally got a response on Logitech that I'm going to be getting a G703, which is obviously going on a bit now, but I haven't had the chance to use a right-handed ergonomic wireless mouse from Logitech since I butchered my G403. So I've got that look to, to look forward to. But uh, yeah, everything's good in my life right now. All right, all right. How about you, Psogo? Yeah, I've been um, trying to get some reviews uh, wrapped up. I've uh, finished the Extra Fire M42 review. Then I did. Uh, let me let me look. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. Uh, the Red Dragon M914 Impact Elite. <laughs> it reminds me of those mice you buy from like children's stores. With, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those um, transformer mice. Uh, um, it's a MMO mouse with eighteen programmer buttons. And yeah, I've also um, finished the Dream Machines DM6 Holy S review. And yeah, I'll have to basically speed up uh, my my review list a bit so I can get to yeah some of the more recent stuff all right all right so yeah let's jump into the extra uh, extra fire m42 so basically let's start from you NVC since you've been most recently using it I guess oh well I'm, I've been using it all this time but but yeah, what do you think? You you have you got it like two weeks ago or one week ago or something. Yeah, I mean, if you put aside the, the DPI difference, which ultimately doesn't matter for every game I play, since I can tweak my in-game sensitivity to like two decimal places, sometimes three, uh, I have no complaints with its actual performance. For me, and the reason I didn't actually get it into review is it's an ambidextrous mouse or a symmetrical way, one, whichever way you want to look at it for right-handed players only. Um, they're not typically the kind of shape that I go for. I always aim better with the, the Death Adders, the G703s, the M4 from Extra Fi, of course. So it wasn't going to be a mouse I reviewed, but I was taking it on to maybe put it in my top five mice of 2020, uh, along with the XM1R that I hopefully will get a sample of soon, maybe before the end of the year, we'll see. Uh, and I have to say, it's just, uh, they've, they've knocked it out of the park, honestly. I, I don't see much they could do differently in future. I'm always going to say I don't want holes on the side. That doesn't change with this mouse. But if that is something that might annoy people, they could even look at lizard skin grips or whatever it is that people put on the side of their mice. So I think if the shoe fits, then very much like the M4, I, I, I would have a very tough job not telling people to consider this very highly. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Psogol? Yeah, uh, you finished the review altogether? Yeah, I finished Sorry. it and yeah, I have uh, pretty much no complaints either. Uh, the only thing I could find, um, as mentioned earlier, is that off-target uh, 400 CPI step, um, which has been fixed within, I don't know, 24 hours or something. So, um, yeah, <laughs> definitely uh, appreciate uh, the, the speed uh, Extrafy is uh, displaying there. And, yeah, I mean, you could maybe criticize the cable for being not as flexible as some of the other uh, cables on, on recent uh, mouse releases. But personally, for me, I think it's flexible enough and I don't really get anything out of an even more flexible cable. I mean, as long as it's not, um, well, not flexible, 
I'm a person perfectly fine with the yeah moderately flexible cable on the M42. Um, one thing I was uh, definitely uh, surprised by was the whole uh, interchangeable uh, back cover thing. Personally, I thought or, or rather expected that it doesn't have that much of an impact or rather is more of a gimmick uh, and not really useful. But uh, after using it, I have to say, um, I was quite surprised by how much um, the, the way I grip the mouse and how I use it changed depending on which, uh, which one of the back covers I was using, um, which I, I didn't expect it to have that much of an impact. And yeah, I would actually be curious um, which one of the two um, you guys uh, prefer. Yeah, I mean, for me, I went into it expecting I would use the, the really low profile back with the extremely gradual slope, um, just because that's what I prefer when I look at ergonomic mice like the, the Def Adder and how gradual it is, and of course the IntelliMouse Pro. But because it's quite a small mouse, I actually preferred the one with the the bigger ass. I don't know why. It just seemed to to fit better. It was more comfortable. Maybe it was my palms slash claw hybrid grip. But um, unlike most bigger mice with a, a really aggressive hump at the back, with this one, I actually preferred it. So um, yeah, very surprising for me there. And just following up on that before we see what Cami's prefers, I really wish that they would find a way to do that with the left side on the M4, like I mentioned last week, because if I could have got rid of that aggressive corner at the back left of the M4, it would have been perfect for me. Um, so hopefully this is the start of many modular style designs of extra five sleeve, or maybe this is just the one that they will do. We will see. Yeah, I was really curious about the, how the build quality on these interchangeable lenses was going to be, because yeah, We've seen some in the past, and like Final Mouse tried with the Infinity Skins, they tried something to make make the mouse a little bit larger because we mo we all know that the Ultra Two is quite small, so more usable for uh, pretty much most people. But yeah, I was a little bit skeptical that there would be some kind of creaking and shell flex and stuff like that that irritates a lot of people and even me to some extent. Uh, but but yeah, I don't. I didn't. At least on my unit, there was like no flex whatsoever. And when you change the shell, it's pretty much like a part of the mouse altogether. So yeah, really impressed about that. For me, uh, although I'm a claw gripper, I do prefer that sort of less pronounced hump or back shell. Oh, interesting. Where the hump is on the middle of the uh, middle part of the mouse, because I sort of like it when you know the bottom part of my palm is touching the mouse only because I feel that that gives me more mobility because on the higher hump there you know the middle part of your palm is also touching the mouse more but that's yeah that's my preference yeah um, build quality on mine is uh, rock solid as well um, no flexing no creaking nothing um, really impressive and yeah I, I agree it would be uh, definitely nice uh, to see if ExtraFi would uh, continue um, doing those uh, modular parts. Maybe, uh, yeah, the, the left side, right side. Basically, something like the Linux Astrum. Uh, just. Uh, what? Excuse me? The, the what mouse? Is that, is that, uh, is that still happening? <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, the the difference would be that the the extra fine might actually exist someday. <laughs> and, yeah, the Astrum, I don't know, but yeah, the the concept itself, I think, is still worthwhile. And if extra fine um, can do uh, this this whole thing um, without compromising build quality. It would definitely, um, yeah, be worthwhile. Um, personally, I've uh, 
excuse me. Uh, personally, I've been um, going back and forth uh, actually with those uh, back covers. Uh, at first, I was using the low profile and was quite convinced that it's actually the better uh, shape for me. But I don't know, after using it for two or three hours, I, I went back to the high profile and surprisingly I found it much better all of a sudden and then stuck with it. But yeah, it's just another thing to, to experiment with. And well, that can be adjusted at any time because it's quite quite solid in terms of construction. So I think it's just nice, nice thing to have um, overall. I mean, I think for most people, they will stick with just, you know, one, one shell and just use, use that pretty much for forever or however long they're going to use the mouse. But I think this is very good for like those people that think that they really haven't ha found their like good shape for them yet, or they don't know what kind of grip style they like. It's, it's very good for those that they can actually, they can use the same mouse, but make small changes to it. Like if you, for example, let's, let's take a Zawi as an example. If you use an FK2 or an S2, there are like more differences than just the hump, you know. So in this case, it's more easier to sort of be used to the mouse, but only thing that changes is the hump. So you can, you know, do some um, kind of research on what works for you the best. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was always the my kind of issue with Zawi uh, in a way as well, though, because... If you're a new person coming in and you weren't lucky enough to get a Zowie mouse fitting kit, then you just got so much choice. And particularly in an era of COVID where you can't just travel to the local esports event where Zowie's almost guaranteed to be at and try them, you really just had to either order them all or try your luck. So the fact that you get this interchangeable shell on a single mouse size, um, I think is only a good thing and it might help you point somebody in the right direction if not find their ID mouse out of the gate. Yeah. I saw one message in the chat. There is a guy who finds that the extra 5 M42 is quite slippery. Is there a way to improve the grip? What do you guys think about that? I guess you could buy some mouse grips, but is there anything else? Well, personally, I had uh, no trouble with grip, uh, mostly due to the honeycomb uh, pattern which I yeah. think uh, helps a lot with grip. But I don't know, I think if if grip is the, the issue, it might be, um, or it could be related uh, to the size as well. If it's just, um, wait a second, uh, I think. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. all right. <laughs> um, yeah, it might be just uh, either, or probably just too small. So trying the, the high profile cover, that cover might um, help alleviate uh, that a bit at least, uh, just to provide overall more stable grip. Yeah, you made one good point that I'm actually interested about. NVC also thinks about this, that the honeycomb shell that this sort of, you know, makes the sort of the coding sort of a non-factor for me because yeah, yeah the sides are usually always very grip easy to grip and you know you can hold your fingers where you want because of the honeycomb design so and you you said that you don't like the holes on the sides but uh, how do you feel about it do you feel that these can add grip or decrease the kind of gripness or so i think they, the i reason? think they add grip uh, and on a smaller mouse i don't mind it so much but for example on the m4 which is quite a wide boy um, and I like sort of wider mice. Uh, when I'm tracking a distance, I tend to squeeze my mouse. And I was just, I was streaming with it the other day, just had it out of the box again. And within five minutes, I could put my thumb toward the camera and you would see the little indents. So for me, it's more of a comfort thing where the way that I play, it just, it makes it uncomfortable to use. But on this smaller size, I don't particularly see it as much of a problem. But it's still it's still just there for me, and I'd rather not have them. But on the flip side, as somebody that doesn't get sweaty hands whilst playing, I typically hate 
surface coatings like on the extra fight m4 or the traditional zowie style coating and i prefer something a little bit more glossy um, as i find this kind of coating quite slippery so for me i think it's almost a necessity for the m4 um, and the m42 but on other shapes I'd, I'd rather them not be there okay okay yeah understood yeah yeah what did you guys think of oh sorry so you were yeah gonna say something. um well generally i think um at least uh from my experience um grip is usually uh i mean it's a rather rather complex uh subject simply because um it's not just it doesn't entirely depend on just one thing um if for me, if the shape itself is just right for, for my hand size and grip and so on, I don't really need a coding that provides additional grip. Um, I think uh, the, the, I don't know, rubber grips and uh, riffle pattern and uh, honeycomb uh, pattern and so on are only necessary if the shape itself isn't uh, doesn't work as well as it theoretically should, or if it's just a shape that is um, I don't know inherently slippery, something like the G two O three, which uh, for me is just difficult to get a proper grip on, and basically I need all the help I can get from the coding to provide some sort of uh, grip, proper grip. And yeah, so in that sense, um, the the honeycomb for me is just something that I don't really need and only really adds to me um, in terms of grip if the shape otherwise doesn't work as well. And uh, yeah, as long as the the holes themselves aren't too large, like on the Cooler Master MM711, for example, or 710, where the holes are so large that um, basically my my thumb and my pinky get stuck in the holes, and yeah, <laughs> that's. Um, not great for grip and it just messes uh with the way my my grip usually would work okay okay interesting interesting yeah i don't remember the mm711 holes being a mass uh, issue for myself but but yeah i had other other problems with that mouse but yeah uh, one guy asked that how are the clicks on the m42 He's, he has the M4 and those clicks are quite heavy. Do you guys feel that these clicks are similar to the M4? Uh, well, yeah, um, the, the switches themselves are exactly the same as on the M4. Um, from what I can tell, or at least from what I can remember about the M4, I would say the clicks on the M41 are a bit lighter and uh, just overall snappier and a bit tighter. I remember uh, the M4 having a bit of post travel, I think, if I remember correctly. And the M42 is definitely improved in that regard, uh, including side buttons. Side buttons much, much improved uh, on the M42, at least. Uh, on my uh, units. Yeah. Did you like the flat? Sorry. Uh, did you? Yeah. Did you like the flatness of the buttons or the sort of the you know the front of the buttons is flat completely? So what do you think about those? That. Yeah. Uh, NVC uh, mentioned that uh, yeah. earlier before I even uh, tried the mouse, and I was sort of mentally prepared to notice it, but actually didn't notice it at all. So, um, and, and maybe it had some, uh, effect, uh, on my, um, experience with, uh, different back covers, but yeah, I, I couldn't tell really. 
Okay. Yeah, how about you, NVZ? Yeah, that was all I was gonna gonna mention. The flatness. It's I got used to it pretty quickly. I still feel it. I think in part it might be because I'm going from Ergo Mouse directly to that pretty much every time. Um, it's I like the low front end on mice. I know some people aren't a fan of it. But regardless of the flatness, just having a low profile front, that more pincer design, I really want to see an ergo shape kind of implement that. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of the buttons. Um, again, it's just not my shape. So me giving absolute opinions on the buttons or the side buttons and where they're positioned, it's never going to be as good as either one of you two doing it since you're, uh, you're both really maining the ambi shapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, hmm. Do you guys think we should? Is there anything more about Tempo 2 that you guys want to talk about? Not off the top of my head. I think we've uh, we've pretty much covered it. I'm still going to plead for liftoff distance customization, but it it is a little bit higher than on the M4, and we're talking like probably less than a millimeter. But I can f I could feel it. I've not done the measurements. It's still stupidly low though, so I'd like the, <laughs> the customization. Yeah, the, the mouse feed, uh, I, I think 0.1 or 0.2 millimeter thinner, so our uh, LOD ends up slightly higher. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in my opinion, this is one of the one of the best mice of the year. Uh, I like the shape a lot, but I think w one reason why I really like this mouse is because it's quite unique and uh, interchangeable shell part is really nice to see nice to see something unique and not not the not the stuff from hk gaming chibles that's <laughs> showing off a lot this year but yeah i guess we could move on to the um end game gear xm1r or the model of wireless which one do you guys want to go first uh let's do model of wireless all right all right so i think we have cover, covered the model of wireless in like <laughs> How many how many podcast episodes like four already or something 400 but, uh, <laughs> yeah pretty much every every episode but uh i guess we could once more you maybe found some more uh, did a little bit more tests or something about the a wireless delay or the motion delay completely and i can also say some impressions because i've been testing it tested it for about a week and now i'm done so but let's continue with the, what you found about out about the uh, wireless delay or the motion delay. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just curious um, what what your experience was like because I saw you um, created a thread on Reddit, I think uh, roughly a week ago or something like that, yeah. and uh, you were asking. Um, about whether people notice any delay compared to Logitech or Razer. And of course, someone immediately chimed in and cited my results yeah. and uh, <laughs> nuked basically uh, the thread. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think it's, it's generally uh, interesting because um, the way I do it is uh, Typically, I first test, um, do all my testing, get all my numbers, and then I hop uh, in game and uh, basically try and uh, basically uh, trying to to get uh, some sort of uh, verification or, or see whether I can feel the sort of uh, delay or whatever. I've measured beforehand. And of course, uh, I could do it the other way around and first hop in game and then see, um, do, do I have any impressions from, from my gameplay? And can I find anything in, in my testing that would support such uh, impressions? I don't think there is really, really any right or wrong but um, at the same time, it is definitely a psychological fact that uh, confirmation bias uh, exists and uh, most definitely influences uh, one's own judgment of any real or perceived uh, latency. 
And for what it's worth, I did talk to Glorious about my findings. And they have their own internal setup for measuring delay. And uh, they claim they, they couldn't reproduce anything like that. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's basically, of course, I still uh, stand by my results uh, simply because um, they've always lined up uh, with reality in the past. But uh, at the same time, I don't know. I mean, is it is it um, is is the the latency um, noticeable to any degree? I don't know. I mean, personally, I would say it is kind of noticeable, but it's basically on the on the verge of not being noticeable. So yeah, I would just be. Uh, curious uh, what your experience was in that regard. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that thread that I made, it was, would have been nice to see that, it, you know, if not, no, it was nice, it's nice, you know, that people, you know, try to share the information, the knowledge, you know, but, <laughs> but I would have liked to see that that thread didn't have any facts or anything because, but, but yeah, I think it, at the last time I checked, I didn't find the poll anymore, but it was something like uh, 60 votes on the no difference whatsoever. Then maybe like 12, 12 votes on the they can feel that the mono wireless is less uh, responsive, and then there were like five people who were, were feeling that the mono wireless was more responsive than any Logitech or Razer mouse. But but yeah, my initial feelings were weird because it did feel like there was something wrong with the mouse, and I I like did a lot of tests. I felt I saw that I felt uh, I didn't feel, but I saw in my test that there was some. DPI deviation, which I mentioned to you in Discord, and then yeah, you had the same results yourself. So I decreased my DPI a little bit. Uh, I, I I saw some posts in Reddit about uh, angle snapping in the mouse. I did tests for that, and I didn't find any proof of any angle snapping. Maybe one out of thirty lines and one out of thirty circles was a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, you know, too much, looking like a, too straight and stuff like that. But but yeah, I think my initial findings were just because I wasn't that used to the shape and it was placebo that I was feeling that I, I knew the facts, you know. I, I tested in uh, CS, there is this sort of training map in CSGO where you can like keep your crosshair, crosshair still and then you fastly flick to left or right to the hedge head and then uh, you stay still for a while. You know, I was testing for can I feel the actual initial movement delay that... Uh, we were talking about earlier and in other episodes also, but I, I would say that I don't feel any difference myself. But yeah, it's it's very very hard to say because yeah, <laughs> there can be a lot of placebo. Yeah, and I mean it's it's uh, most importantly uh, difficult to isolate because maybe there is some latency, but on the other hand, you have uh, no cable drag, uh, lightweight. Uh, excellent smooth glide and so on and those uh, might compensate or mask any actual or perceived uh, latency so in that sense um, yeah I mean there is bias and, and there is also just the, the, the problem that you cannot really um, isolate latency um, just during during gameplay i mean probably uh you'd have to either use the the pcb in another mouse or find some other way to to isolate it but yeah it can be um can be difficult uh, to really um get a good valid impression uh just from gameplay alone yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, for me, having not used the mouse, the number alone would be enough for, to deter me. It's kind of like monitors in a way when you're looking at websites like Artings, TFT Central, PC monitors, and you're looking at the signal processing delay. If you've got two 240 hertz monitors next to each other, one of them says it has a signal processing delay of, let's just say, 1.2 milliseconds, and the other one says 3.14 
um, I'm always going to take the 1.2. Likewise, <laughs> when it comes to this mouse, this this is a clone of so many other mice on the market that don't have that base delay. So ultimately, that's enough for me not to buy the mouse. Whether I would notice or not, like you say, you guys, or at least Kami's experience was that he didn't didn't feel it. I probably wouldn't feel it either, but just just knowing is enough to deter me. So I, I would hope that they can figure out whatever it is and uh, yeah, I think the drops. yeah, sorry, um, yeah, I think there is also uh, that sort of ease of mind afforded by having uh, hardware that is known to have the lowest latency or whatever. It's just. Basically, you don't uh, start second guessing yourself uh, when you miss that uh, you, you don't have anything to, to blame uh, yourself uh, other than yourself. Um, because, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if there is no delay, no latency, if, I don't know, yeah, signal processing time is as low as possible, it's just uh, good, good to have it, and uh, provides some some ease of mind, or at least for me, it's psychologically, um, yeah, reassuring to know that uh, whatever it is, uh, it's not the hardware that uh, is at fault. Yeah, that that's that's a really good point. Yeah, one hundred percent true. Yeah, for for me, it was just was just super hard to figure out if it's just a shape or if there is you know some delay or something that's that's not you know that's maybe ruining my performance i mean it would be perfect if there was a for, for example razor viper shaped mallow <laughs> mallow that had the same internals as the mallow then it would be really easy to or easier to compare the two but with the viper ultimate i get none of these you know issues that i performance issues that i get with the mallow wireless uh but it could be down to shape, although they are similar shapes, but there is still quite a bit difference in the hand feeling. And from that, uh, there was a guy that asked that in the chat, Nadi was his name, that so he is he's, he's asking basically this what Viper Ultimate better than the Mallo Wireless. Uh, excuse me, case, what's the question? Uh, is Viper Ultimate better than the Mallo Wireless? What do you guys think? Um well, uh, I think, um, well, uh, for 150 US dollars uh, for the Viper Ultimate and 80 for the Model O Wireless, I think the Model O Wireless is probably the better buy. Whether it's actually better uh, as a mouse from a uh, objective standpoint, just in terms of overall performance and technology, yes, no doubt. Uh, Razor Viper Ultimate, uh, just in terms of the sensor and uh, the wireless technology and everything, is uh, quite a bit ahead of the model of wireless. It's just in terms of technology, including the, the optical switches, it's... Um, pretty much the best uh, in terms of um, wireless mice currently available on the market, uh, at least in terms of ambidextrous. Actually, the DEF Adder V2 Pro and Nega Pro, and I think also the, the Basilisk Ultimate are slightly uh, better, actually, uh, in terms of wireless delay, even more improved. But yeah, if we compare Viper Ultimate to the model of wireless, no doubt in, in terms of technology, but yeah, if we look at value, I would say model of wireless is the better buy and does have some, some, yeah, I wouldn't call it advantages, but some um, handy features uh, that aren't available on the Viper Ultimate, such as USB Type-C fast charging. 
Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, what do you think, NVC? If the Model D, uh, have you by the way, have you tried the Model D? Uh, no, I haven't. The only reason I didn't try it is because I already have pretty much every other right-handed ergonomic mouse that was a similar shape, um, and there was just no point in buying it to try. Um, but I've obviously read a lot about it. For me, um, in terms of the question between the the Viper and the the Model O, or if you take the the Def Adder. Uh, or Death Adder V2 Pro against the the Model D if it was a wireless one. Um, yeah, like P. Zegel says, you, you can't beat Razer and Logitech when it comes to wireless technology. Um, I just uh, And even just sensor performance in general for for a lot of things. Um, companies like Extrify and, and Endgame are getting close now. And Zowie have always got the reliability factor. But in the end, it, it's whether the shoe fits, right? Um, the Model O might be a better a better fit for your hand than the Razer Viper, and that can be the difference as well between you hitting and missing a shot, um, and how comfortable it is for you to track. It's not just about the sensor; a lot of it's about the shape. So, I would say if you're thinking about buying the the Viper Ultimate, maybe go for the really cheap Viper wired one. Try and find it on sale. See if you like the shape, then make the step up, rather than going straight in for the the wireless one with the deaf adder it's a bit easier you can just buy like a really old deaf adder or just walk into a store and put your hand on it um for for certain mice that isn't that isn't as easy to do um it just comes down to price and how willing you are to make a risk that the viper shape might be comfortable for you that's actually that's a really good point yeah get the viper first and try that one yeah 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 uh, do you think that there is any chance that you will you will maintain the Model D wireless when it comes out if it has these same kind of numbers? The wireless tech is the same as on the Model O wireless. Uh, no, no. Yeah. The, the, someone, Pizogo, my good friend, would have to come to me and be like, <laughs> "This thing is fast enough that uh, the numbers show no discernible difference," and then maybe I would use it. But um, I'd happily go back to wired, to be honest. Uh, and I'd happily consider the, the wired version of the Model D if they updated the sensor to something a bit newer, because going back to the 3360 now after everything else would be a bit weird. So it's not it's not impossible that I'd try it, but yeah, the numbers would have to, to convince me. Not because it would feel any faster, but just for my brain to just know that I don't have to worry about my mouse. Yeah, completely understandable, yeah. Yeah, there is one question more that, that's directed to Psogol. Have you tested the battery life of the battery life of the Model O wireless? Because some people have said that it doesn't last seventy hours with no RGB. Uh, well, yes, um, of course. I, I didn't have the the time to to actually drain the battery completely, so I can just. The only thing I can do is take uh, the the hours I used it and uh, basically do the math uh, um, based on uh, the battery life that is still left and try to figure it out that way and just assume that uh, battery consumption is linear. But the problem, of course, is that those battery level indicators on that uh, reliable and uh, precise and it's just it's always rounded in some way I mean if it's in increments of 20% for example it might actually be charged at I don't know 86% or maybe it's just 76 which of course is a huge difference but it would both show up as 80% so those estimations are necessarily um, quite uh, quite uh, imprecise and um, possibly not accurate at all, because it's it's absolutely possible that uh, I don't know for twenty to ninety percent uh, it's linear. And then the, the battery gets drained within, I don't know, 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, at least with all that uh, said, I uh, had a battery life of 
after using uh, the mouse for, let me check, um, Oh, let me check. <laughs> I can't find it right now, but uh, it should be roughly accurate. Uh, those, uh, I think, 71 hours are what Glorious claims. Maybe without RGB, it would end up, I don't know, might be possible that it's just 60 hours. I mean, it would also depend on uh, what the, the usage profile is because uh, the 3370, which the uh, BAMF uh, sensor is based on, has uh, a lot of different um, power saving uh, modes internally. So if the mouse isn't moved, it'll switch to a low power mode, which has significantly lower power draw. So somebody who doesn't move the mouse as much would get significantly higher battery life to someone who uh, throws it uh, across the table all the time. Um, yeah, so I think, I don't know, something like 60 hours should uh, definitely be possible, maybe even the, the full 70 hours, but it's hard to tell uh, from my testing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the thing for me, which separates Razer and almost separates with Logitech, because you can buy a third party version of it from like Taiwan or something, is that you get the charging dock. And I couldn't live without it because I hate plugging and unplugging my mouse all the time. Um, so just having the ability to plop the mouse on a charging dock um, in the evening just makes the battery life infinite for me. And I almost never have to end up um, plugging in the cable. It's happened like once since I've had it. So um, I would like to see more companies look at creating a dock or just some kind of unified system uh, so we can just use one dock or one charging mat for everything, which doesn't add too much weight. Yeah, I agree with the dock that it's, it's, it's just so easy to, you know, charge the mouse every night and it's hard to forget when the dock is, you know, staring at you right on your desk, just charge the mouse. It's really nice to have one. I need to check out. I I had to buy the uh, Superlight myself, so I need to check out those, uh, you know, the third party charging docks if I like the mouse. Yeah, you have to do yeah. it from some weird site and some really convoluted way of doing it. But I'm definitely if I if I like the G seven hundred three and I might swap to it. Who knows? I will definitely try and get one myself for that mouse. I'm actually wondering yeah. if I'm going to feel the weight increase. Actually, going back to the the G seven hundred three. Because I think it's like a hundred grams or something, or a bit less maybe when you redu when you remove the the bottom thing. But we'll see. Yeah, I think you should. I mean, isn't the Death V two Pro? It's like 70, 80, 80 grams 80, or something. 82, 83, something like that. Yeah. 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 All right, but I <laughs> maybe now we are completely done with the model of one. <laughs> so it's been five episodes or something. Till next week. So yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah when some, something new comes up about it yeah but yeah on the 10 game gear xm1 r so what did you guys i mean we found up you found out a little bit earlier than me and then i found out a day or two after and we uh, we mentioned something about it uh, so what were your initial initial kind of uh feelings about the you know the specs and the stuff that was updated Oh, first off, I just want to say how gorgeous does the dark reflex, oh, sorry, the dark frost version look of this mouse. Um, it looks incredible. Uh, I think it's a case of don't change or don't try and change what's already, you know, what is it? Don't fix what's not broken. Yeah, that's the term. Um, and they've just, it seems like they've made improvements to everything. As always, I'm going to be a bit apprehensive about the sensor. We'll see. I haven't used that sensor before, um, but they're saying it's faster. And I trust Endgame, given they introduced the analog switches on mouse one and two, and they're all about low latency through and through. Um, to me, I, it, it just looks like you take what's already awesome and you make it even more awesome. So I'm very excited to try it. I, I'm still hoping for an ergonomic shell for them. Um, but again, not my shape I'll use personally, but I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they've managed to make it better rather than just reading off a, 
of a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, well, I have a couple of samples um, here, but I ha have yet to touch them, so can't really comment uh, on the on the mice themselves. But um, at least from my from what I've seen, um, I would expect it to be an overall upgrade compared to the whatever earlier version uh, there is. Um, I'm a bit, I'm not sure if there is even from a, from a, a yeah, testing standpoint, uh, from standpoint of empirical uh, testing, uh, if there is any even measurable difference in terms of motion delay uh, between 3389 and 3370, I mean, Endgame Gear claimed that it's ever so slightly more responsive, uh, which might not even be due to the different sensor, but rather different firmware, which uh, has been uh, rewritten uh, entirely for the XM1R. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have to see whether uh, that claim actually holds true and most importantly, whether it's it's significant in any way. Personally, I doubt it. Uh, I think for wired mice, 338090 is perfectly fine and pretty much as good as it gets. Uh, 3370 is rather uh, something more interesting when it comes to wireless, since it does have overall uh, comparable performance uh, to a 3389, but much lower power consumption. So, um, yeah, might might mean that in the future we might see uh, a wireless XM1. Maybe it's just basically um, uh, their way of uh, splitting costs. So they, they first release uh, the wired just because um, it's possible. Uh, to do so, and then later on the wireless version. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a bit uh, uh, curious about uh, the switches. Um, whether I mean I've tested the the XM1 RGB, which already had uh, improved clicks, and will be interesting to see whether those on the XM1 are, are improved even further. Yeah, what, what were the switches on the RGB version again? Um, I think it was, uh, let me check, uh, Kail. But... Yeah, it was GM 4.0, I think. Um, I'll have it in a minute. Yeah, I just got yeah, it. it is... yeah. GM 4.0. Which were pre-selected to have a very specific uh, actuation force. Usually, the the range of actuation force is wider, and those were pre-selected to sort of guarantee a very specific actuation force and certain level of force? a certain level of uniformity. What did you mean? Uh, did you do you have that exact value of the actuation force? Uh, yes, there? I think. Uh, let me check. Um, <laughs> it was um, so usually it's sixty five plus minus fifteen GF, and those pre selected it's sixty plus minus five, so okay. the range is much lower. Yeah, so it's pretty much the same. I mean, here it states on the XM1R that it's 55 to 60. Oh, yeah, 60, okay. So, yeah. I, I thought the XM1R GP, those clicks were a little bit, you know, hard to actuate already. To me, at least. At least they were harder to actuate than the XM1 version 2 for me. But the click feeling was improved from the original XM1, definitely. I was a little bit disappointed about the the fact that it's it's still the same same shell 
I was hoping for a smaller version. I I wasn't expecting a wireless one to come like this fast. And it makes sense, as you said, that they are testing sort of the new sensor that they're going to use in the wireless one in this. They're going to implement it in this one, and then when they go wireless, it pretty, pretty much is already done. And they can, you know, start testing the wireless implementation from that. So, yeah, it does make sense. To, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think their their approach is to basically try and perfect uh, a shape first and try to get the internals uh, as good as possible and then uh, venture out and do other shapes. Um, Make a death adder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some, by, some guys saying on the chat that the Mini is going to be middle, uh, mid-2021 and the wireless is late-2021, but I'm not sure if anything like that is confirmed. I think there was Endgame Rep talking in Mouse Review or something oh, okay. about that. Have you guys heard about it? Or? Yeah, he was typing for the last couple of months, I think, which is how people kind of knew there was a new one coming. I think it's very difficult in the pandemic at the moment, especially to, to put a date on anything coming to market, so... I think it's one of those things we'll just have to wait and see uh, if it comes to fruition. But I mean, 2020 has basically been the year of ambidextrous mice. You've got so much choice now that you, if you really want a smaller XM1, you can probably find a smaller ambidextrous mouse that's similar with a, a kind of the pincer front shape, like even the uh, the Extrify M4 possibly. But uh, I, I just want them to give me an ergo, something ergo from them. Yeah, it would be it would be nice to see and what what they would do with an ergo shape because yeah, when XM One came out, it was quite original. You know, there was really nothing quite like it in terms of shape. I mean, so it would be nice to see what what will they come up for an ergo mouse. I mean, ergo mice, there hasn't been that much innovation for them. I mean, in a long time. Deathler has been the same shape for, I don't know how many years, 10 years, 12 years. Then there was the Intellimouse 3.0 that, you know, people have copied for multiple different, you know, mice. The EC1 was quite close to it. Then, by the way, was EC1 or EC2 first? EC1 was probably first, I guess, because of the name. I think they both launched at the same time, honestly. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, could be, could be, yeah. And then, the, yeah, then there is the Model D and the Model D minus. The Model D minus is very close to the EC2, in my opinion, at least. And uh, is there like, then there is the new Ninjutsu mouse, which is coming uh, in a couple oh, of yeah, weeks. Oh, yeah, that's the something. one that looks a little bit like the 3.0, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. And yeah, then there was that, one of you linked it, that Asus. Keris? Maybe. Yeah, was it? I think it was that the wireless. Yeah, Asus. it looks interesting. Yeah. I, I, I think if I, if anyone's going to make a mouse that comes close to Asus, I mean Asus comes close to Razer or Logitech, Asus definitely have the financials uh, to do it. And we've seen Asus experiment with uh, you know replaceable mouse one and two switches, and they they're, they're always talking about low latency. They've got the three sixty hertz display. Um, this mouse has to be good to keep up with everything else in their their lineup. So. I, I would very much like to try it. The, my only like worry with an Asus mouse is it's probably going to cost like two hundred pounds. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we will see. I'm not going to pay to try it, but I'm keeping a close watch on it. Yeah, do I you do. have one already? So I, I have a, a sample, but it's yet to be touched. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In your <laughs> big bag of sam samples, not yet, not yet touched. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I have I have uh, the the Razer Death Adder V2 Pro as well. I have Steel Series Aerox uh, Free Wireless. Uh, I have Rocket Burst Core, and I don't know something else. So <laughs> definitely need to speed up uh, things to uh, get those uh, sorted. Yeah. The one guy mentioned also that drunken monkey mentioned the <laughs> Ponich Erico, uh, and yeah, it's the wireless Ponich mouse. I have, I I've looked at it, but I don't exactly know how 
close it to the close is it to the EC2, but it, it looks quite similar to the EC2 kind of shape. Yeah, I think uh, at least as far as I know, it's the exact same shell and uh, in fact the same mold as the Shakun Light 2 200, which has also been used by uh, several other companies. Um, so yeah, and, and that one is pretty much an exact clone of the EC2 shape. Yeah. Uh, have you thought about getting the Pony Yeah, I've, I've uh, uh, contacted them, but haven't heard anything back yet. How about you, NVC? Yeah, I'd be interested to try it again, it's just because it's... I'm going to wait until Pizzogo reviews it and tells me numbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's my plan. Now, I'm for me, like apart from everything I've got, I'm most interested in the Keras because I really liked the Gladius 1 and 2. They were just bricks. Um, and obviously with the Death Adder, it's basically an improved version of the Gladius. Uh, and if the Keras is anything shaped similar to the Gladius and the software has as much customization that I'm interested because in, it's one of the few mice that allows you, at least previously with the Gladius, to enable angle snapping. And it's still something I want to play around with. So that, that'll that be the next one that I, I really try and get unless Logitech release a new Ergo. All right, all right. Yeah, we kind of skipped to the other things. But yeah, was there something else that you... The X one R, I mean, there, in my opinion, there is just not that much to talk about yet. Yet, I mean, the specs, they look kind of impressive. Oh, yeah, one thing that I wanted to mention, I don't remember, was it the 3335 or the 3370 that was like, we talked about it in one of our episodes that, I think it was the 3370 sensor that you had measured some kind of different, uh, so-called some latency issues with other mice that had the 3370 sensor. Was that the case or have Yeah, I it's it? just cool. a general uh, quirk of uh, that architecture, uh, which I'm not entirely, I haven't really gotten to the, the bottom of it uh, so that I could say it's exactly uh, like this and this and this, but um, yeah, basically, um, it's a shared behavior between both the 3335 and 3370 that at the onset of motion, uh, latency is higher compared to um, the end uh, of, of any motion. So basically, uh, when, when moving from a standstill, uh, the sensor has to go through several power modes until it arrives at the highest power mode where latency is lowest. But I don't know, it's it's difficult to, to really uh, lock down in a sense uh, um, in my testing. Uh, it's just something of observed uh, several times in, in various 3335 implementations. I'm not entirely sure um, why it varies in terms of uh, degree between implementations, no idea. Might be some using uh, less efficient uh, uh, settings and others using more efficient settings, I don't know. But it's just a general uh, architectural quirk I've noticed and something that isn't present on, for example, Logitech Hero or Razer uh, Focus Plus or 3399. Uh, so, yeah, when comparing basically uh, Razer and Logitech with any uh, 3335 uh, or 3370 wireless mice, it's just one one small mana difference. But interesting, yeah, I mean, you said, mentioned that uh, the power saving features and uh, yeah, in the end game gear XM1R, you know, the specification of the website, they uh, here they claim that they have the, all of them disabled. So, <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah, that uh, that is pretty much 
a given yeah i mean i've tested yeah. the the other wired 3370 mouse uh, the only one that's currently available uh, outside of model o wireless which is the i don't know how it's pronounced mountain mckellu or, or something like that mckellu i don't know 67 and yeah so the sense of performance was perfectly fine in wired mode definitely on par with 3389 or 3360 whatever um so i would expect uh the xm1r to at least be as good as uh, that one all right all right yeah yeah i mean we had uh one more topic to discuss but it's already been an hour so do you want to leave it for next episode yeah or? i think yeah. We're, we're doing, yeah yeah <laughs> it's a little bit long already so yeah uh yeah that's pretty much it i mean we'll have i think yeah i think it's best if we have like two weeks off next week is christmas and then the week after that it's new year's so Unless you guys want to do it like early next week, but we might not have any new releases or anything much to talk about apart from the thing that's left off from this episode. And then in January, we will have those guys from Razer, Endgame Gear, Extrafy, and uh, Rocket joining in, or maybe January and February. Mm -hmm. Sounds and good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's so, see. Yeah. Maybe we can, we can fit it uh, in somewhere. Uh, in the next two weeks, maybe just just a short episode. Um, we'll see. Yeah, that's fine for me. Yeah, we can discuss that in the, in the Discord after. But but yeah, that was pretty much it for the episode. Thank you guys for listening and watching. And uh, yeah, if you're listening this on Spotify or YouTube, you pretty much know where to find me. But uh, uh, NVC, yeah, he, he, him you can find in Twitch. Uh, tv slash just nvc and uh, it's his youtube channel also so just nvc there and it's also his twitter twitter username and uh so cool. you can find his reviews on mouse review uh, reddit mouse review and then also of course on tech power up he does the reviews on there so yeah that's pretty much it thank you guys for joining me and yeah see you next week or whenever we are gonna do the next episode <laughs>